everybody and welcome to another episode about atlas unfortunately it is not out yet but there's a ton more of information that came out about the game we are going to be going over every single smidge that is out of making sure you are as informed as possible but before we hop into that boom let's go ahead and go over a little bit of that delay ahoy after thinking carefully over the past several days we've decided to delay the atlas launch until december 19th to give the team more time to run through this massive game's extensive content it's a vast virtual world out there across the atlas and the team's going to use that extra time to review every portion of it thoroughly we're sorry about the delay and we know how much everyone is looking forward to establishing that empires the team here at grape shot is so excited to bring this new world to life with you and we know it's going to be an absolute blast so please keep your powder dry a little bit longer and at long last next wednesday the 19th we'll be joining you on the most excellent adventure of our lifetime see you on the atlas soon pathfinders jet jeremy and jesse along with a whole ton of links that you guys can go to to go ahead and keep up with atlas but now that that is out the way and the fact that it's gonna be coming out this week and i cannot wait to hop into it make sure you guys are staying tuned not just to stay up to date with it but also because as soon as it comes out we're gonna be covering the bejesus out of it sail of the seven seas and try and have a fan freaking fantastic time and even span our own empire as a sniper gang from scratch but an article actually came out detailing a lot of information from someone who actually got a little bit of hands-on early with the game a little bit jealous of you bro but i went ahead and actually summarized and got all of the important tidbits from this article so in the background you guys are going to be seeing a variety of screenshots that have been released so far along with a brand new teaser that was released lately we'll be breaking those down a little bit more in depth and what they are actually telling us as screenshots and what we can take away from them but first things first let's go ahead and get all the info we can so we know that you are going to be able to capture and govern entire islands along with build and sail galleons and then fight in massive sea battles against other players this is actually a quote from one of the developers that they built new technology that stitches together a world that's 1200 times the size of a single arc server which is what i thought would be the case because we know this is going to be a little bit more of an mmo type game with around 40,000 players per server that is redundant a lot of people don't believe it but this is what i thought that it would be is that it would kind of be some kind of way of stitching things together and kind of like really localizing things to like kind of potentially somewhat of a grid system is one way of thinking of it and kind of traveling in between grids it's kind of like traveling between mini servers that are all kind of consistent within this larger architecture of a single atlas server so atlas will only have one pvp and one pve server for each major region making it kind of in that mmo sense like very much so a consistent consistent world we really expect people to take advantage of the large size of the world to stake their claim on parts of the map establish a government and build ships and outposts rap check says who is one of the developers for all that atlas does it's still deeply rooted in the first person survival experience of arc that means chopping trees taming wildlife and managing basic systems like thirst and hunger while out at sea that'll undoubtedly disappoint those who already don't like arc i was already indifferent to it but one side took the helm of a brigantine i didn't mind those similarities nearly as much players can personally man cannons unfurl and turn sails or patch holes in their ship on bigger ships you'll need a coordinated team to manage everything but atlas will also let players hire npc crew members to boss around a big part of the game is going to be recruiting crew and keeping them paid and fed so you can actually drive these ships around rep check explains and we've got a bunch of cool systems in the game for simplifying controls of your shipmates it's a system that builds off of arcs dinosaur management feature to give you that same degree of control over your ai crew and their various stats from the helm or lieutenant's post of my brigantine i can command my crew to fire repel invaders and more this theoretically makes atlas more approachable to players who prefer to go it alone but everyone can benefit from having a few ai squad mates on their ship making it seem that like even if you do try to play this game solo it is going to be viable due to the fact that kind of like how an arc you were able to tame dinosaurs here you'll be able to hire in a sense all of these different workers and people to man your ship and they're going to function similarly to dinosaurs in arc where you can command them around set their behaviors and even from the sounds of it level them up and make their certain stat points go up in whatever fashion you choose there will be five size templates to choose from ranging from pitiful rafts all the way up to enormous galleons each template provides the base structure of the ship but players are free to customize parts of it how they can please on the brigantine for example the deck had more than enough space to erect a watchtower or high walls that shield the crew from incoming fire likewise players can carve out the space below the deck with stairs ladders and 
crew cabins and whatever layout they choose artistic minded players can go all out painting their ships crazy colors while a special tool will let you import an emblem to proudly display anywhere you like and this is where it's really cool because by the sounds of it these aren't just going to be like ships that are kind of like you know cookie cutter ships these are going to be highly customizable ships where you can make the decision between like erecting an entire watchtower almost like building up a base on the ship or building up high walls to shield the crew from incoming fire that sounds like these ships are going to have an immense detail immense level of customizability and i cannot wait to try to have the ultimately pimped galleon on the entire seven seas cannons poked holes in each other's holes until one by one ships started sinking this is kind of describing a little bit of an encounter that the person who got hands on early actually managed to uh, do throughout his experience exchanging cannon volleys and delegating repairs was fun but it was much more exciting when two ships neared each other and each respective crew invaded the other ship there's a bit of strategy to how pvp battles go down because dead players can always resurrect in a beds hidden below deck destroying those beds first is always a good idea so it sounds like actually boarding other ships is going to be have a good amount of strategy to it but also dude these ship to ship battles they're just going to play out in such an awesome way it's like i it's gonna be awesome but skill and strategy will play a role in determining atlas's most skilled captains its entire world is more like 1200 different arc servers stitched together on a grid spanning several biomes that range from frozen arctic wastes to white sand mediterranean beaches each grid contains a few individual handcrafted islands and when you sail away from those to another grid of different islands you are also seamlessly transferring to a different server node it's a setup similar to eve online's galaxy of new Eden only without hidden loading screens when players first start a new character they'll spawn into a one of a few freeport towns that double as a safe zone so they can learn the ropes and build a ship without immediately being blown up make no mistake though atlas is a sandbox mmo in the true sense that there is little in the way of a linear story that players must follow there's going to be a main quest line that involves traveling the entire scope of the world to collect nine artifacts and bring them to the center of the map where players can fight an enormous sea demon aboard their ships atlas will launch with a basic government system where players can claim ownership over a piece of land and prevent other players from building there within that domain and governing players can set taxation rates that automatically deducts a portion of all resources and treasure gathered there straight into their bank making it seem like it's not just gonna be like oh look at me i'm the governor it's gonna be like yo i'm the governor you collect something here i'm taxing you dude and that's gonna be so awesome to watch play out on those like big old mmo scale so that's gonna automatically deduct a portion of all resources and treasure gathered within where that governing body is straight into the bank of that government there's a real reason to become a benevolent government and own a huge swath of the world map but invite players to come in and ally with you and become serfs making it seem like it's really gonna play out like civilization evolving and like they're putting in all these systems and it's gonna be interesting to see how that ends up playing out with players we discovered a bottle with a randomly generated treasure map inside of it that led us on an adventure to the next island over with our ships all but sunk we constructed a raft and all piled on with one person manning the single sail while the rest of us used our keyboards to play musical instruments to pass the time that's when a bunch of ghost ships appeared through the fog and began chasing us leading to a tense fight that we barely survived on board our rickety raft armed with a single cannon making it seem that dude even the early days the struggle days of poopy ships and minimal cannons and firepower are still going to be a challenge that involves strategy you're even going to be able to tame and ride various animals build yourself a new home or explore the massive world and discover all manner of secrets or rare resources to trade with other players with new features coming as well and in the future players in atlas will age and eventually die if they get too old forcing players to start a new character but the devs tell me the second phase of that feature will include a full systems where players can mate and birth children that they can transfer their stats to and take control of when they reach a certain age they're thinking like long term these are some insane systems that they have in store in plan if this truly ends up playing out like this this is gonna be nutty but studio wildcard is also working on a tarot card based magic system and land ownership will be expanded so players can even establish specific laws that have to be followed while in their territory furthering that just kind of like whole feel of like it's gonna be like an actual world evolving from the beginning which is why it's gonna be so cool to well well, obviously hop into this from day one and see how civilization evolves and hopefully stake out a little island for us to struggle out upon i swear i'll be a benevolent ruler expect 
no higher than 99% tax rates, okay? I'm gonna be fair here, boys. But the idea is that one day players will log into Atlas and find a populated and lively world driven entirely by the whims of its players. Wildcard will also be releasing all of the dev tools for Atlas so players can make their own servers, something that usually doesn't happen with MMOs and using either a provided dev kit or the Unreal Engine. Players can re-sculpt the landscape, create their own mods and host their own Atlas servers at no extra charge beyond the cost of server hosting. And there are some really cool mods that have come out for arc so it's gonna be cool to see the type of mods that come out for atlas and especially given the modding scene and how big they're aiming with this hopefully some mods come out that transform atlas into like a purely single player game i think that'd be so cool if any mods like that did come out that really kind of expanded the ai in their reach because that'd be kind of cool because at that point you're gonna be playing on private servers which probably aren't gonna be fitting 40,000 people on them but who knows how that's gonna go down that's just kind of like my thoughts around that it will not have any paid dlc or expansions because the world of atlas is obviously going to grow but it should grow for everybody to help cover the cost of development though atlas will eventually add cosmetic microtransactions before leaving early access so honestly in terms of microtransactions and paying beyond the base price of the game like cosmetics that's never really been a problem with me and i feel like most people don't really mind so i think that that's totally reasonable and i think that's fair because i mean if you want to pimp out your pirate you want to be the pimpinest pirate on the seven seas so be it bro i'm gonna try to look like blackbeard meets like a west side pimp or something all right we gonna be going a full swagalicious out here but players will be able to buy outfits and decorations but in-game methods will still be available to grind for these items and although atlas only costs 30 dollars right now it will eventually go up to 60 dollars when it leaves early access but that is good to hear that you're still going to be able to get outfits and decorations through in-game as well it's not going to be a purely purchase thing it's just that there will be a purchasing avenue to go along with that and at launch atlas will run better than arc does now that's kind of a bold claim but i will see man Launch is pretty close and it will continue to improve from there. Part of that is due to improvements made to both the Unreal Engine and Studio Wildcard's own code. But RapCheck also says, no surprise here, open sea is a lot easier to render than dense jungles and that does make sense i know a lot of people absolutely could not believe some of the claims that were going around with this world but you guys got to remember that the world's going to be huge but a lot of it is going to be like sea and you're going to be like encountering people out at sea and water is definitely a little bit easier on your graphics card on your cpu on your computer to render and deal with than like all of this intricate stuff that might be going on within a forest such as the interior areas of arc so it's not unreasonable from what they're saying but that about sums up the article with a whole ton of information let me know what you guys are most looking forward to out of all of that and what you are hyped to be doing but definitely some awesome info coming out regarding that but with all of that information out let's start going over all of the info that has come out and that we can deduce from some of these screenshots that have been released so let's begin over here with the one that actually came out along with the announcement announcement that it was going to be delayed and that is a look at a free climber and what appears to be the ability not just you guys see those buildings in the background it appears that somehow you might be able to like maybe this will kind of be built in and it's just part of the map or you're gonna actually be able to like build in housing into the sides of cliffs that just seems really awesome but the big takeaway from this is the ability to do rocket climbing to an extent so definitely cool stuff over there here we have the freeport public execution an officer in a horse-drawn carriage turns away from a grizzly public execution in freeport in a freeport the resulting uniquely identifiable player skulls can be used to trade for bounties on them so apparently you'll be able to freaking hang people take their skull and apparently it's gonna be pretty valuable though but spooky scary skeletons hopefully we could like hang some skeletons you know on the castle walls to lure potential attackers away as we build up our own stuff here we can see a well-geared crew engages soldiers of the army of the damned deep in a pirate's cave on their way to the valuable golden age artifacts of power meaning that there's some sort of confirmation that there's gonna be certain artifacts that you could treasure hunt after sometime to do with the golden age and that they are going to be protected by these ai enemies known as the army of the damned and apparently are gonna need to be 
pretty well armored to take them down you guys can see a variety of the things available there will be shields within the game there are going to be different weapons you guys can see some of the different armors being equipped there are going to be depths that you could dive into into these caves and do cave exploring and cave spelunking and the ai that you're going to be fighting they look pretty cool and they got some pretty pimping weapons too but over here we are having traveled to an exotic island filled with an ancient golden age ruins a veteran pathfinder blasts a blunderbuss into the scaly hide of a gorgon so obviously we can see that gorgons are going to be within the game as will blunderbusses which is pretty much like a medieval not medieval that's not the word i'm looking for but like an old school shotgun that definitely takes a quite hot a minute it's too reload but you guys can see this gorgon appears to be protecting some sort of a temple and i'm guessing some sort of an artifact so a lot of the treasure hunting and artifact hunting in this game appears that it's going to be protected by a variety of different enemies potentially dependent on the island you're going to because in the initial trailer we actually saw and this was really interesting it caught my eye there was this island with like a huge elephant sculpture on it right and on that island which was kind of like it was more of like a god depiction of an elephant or like an a god being depicted as an elephant an elephant being depicted as a god right it was kind of like one of those and on that island you could distinctly tell there were elephants making me think that depending on the island you're going to they're actually going to be having like distinct themes to each and every one of them here we can see at a western tropical freeport a captain works on making repairs to her boats while her lieutenant buys some fresh fishing bait under the stony gaze of an imposing discovery zone monument so something known as a discovery zone appears to be popping off and we'll see what the whole shindig with that is but you guys can see that there appears like there might be a little shop set up at these ports you guys can see that bait is one thing you can get and you will actually be able to do probably fishing with that that's usually what that does and you will actually be able to repair your ship i'm guessing you might need to do that at a port like this or maybe you know like they're getting supplies from here to do those repairs or maybe this is the only safe place to do repairs because if you're repairing out in the open sea you know you might get jumped by someone at any point in time one of our concept artists whipped this up for their pre-launch excitement get ready for atlas on december 19th for the record you can't actually ride cannon mobiles lol in the game but you can latch them onto cargo carrying beasts of burden so what that means is that you will be able to actually latch cannons onto carts and onto certain tameable animals and bring them along into battle like for example a horse drawn carriage you could go ahead and toss within the back of that cart a cannon like this to bring it to battle although i still wish i could tame the cannon you know ride it wild it out like this but it's still gonna be awesome to be able to drag these along into battle and see what we could do deep within the eastern temperate region an intense battle battle takes place as a company furiously defends their mountain fortress against the cavalry charge aided by mobile field artillery and the first image you guys are seeing what appears to be one side taking cover behind defenses whole bunch of different rifles muskets within kind of like the hill and the inclines leading up to their protected kind of castle base with all of those buildings you guys can see like it just looks like they built up an entire town an entire civilization you could even see out in the countryside a couple of distinct buildings as well a little bit of like a wooden bridge going over something some stone architecture and potentially like like a tunnel going under it maybe for like sewage or for water as well and then in image number two you guys can see what appears to be the attackers mounted some cavalry obviously horses and cavalry will be something you will be able to tame and ride into battle but we could also see exactly what i was talking about because copper peak over at the very left of this shot and you can see what appears to be the buttocks of some sort of an animal and what appears to be a cannon on the back of a carriage that someone is firing and using as an attack so kind of what we were talking about a little bit earlier very cool to see that in action and the types of assaults we'll be able to stage with big boy weapons like that across a narrow inland river bridge two naval officers duel unto death the duelist able to load ammo quicker both statistically via character progression and also skillfully through active reload minigame emerges victorious with a dual wielding blast so dual wielding is going to be in the game you're going to be able to i don't know if this is just like two players you know arranging a duel or if a duel will be like an official thing that you could actually engage within they obviously said that you're actually going to be able to reload reload faster through an active reload minigame kind of think maybe something similar to gears of war if you guys ever saw how reloading goes down in that but also that is going to be a skill your reload speed is something you will be able to affect when you level up and go up with that in the first image we could see what appears to be the first character 
loading up his thing with a little bit of keg of gunpowder you can see the captain across doing that as well along with what appears to be the beginnings of a castle or a town all the way in the background and even like an ox or something as well if you pay a little bit of attention to that but in the second screenshot it appears that our comrade across the aisle he's taking a little bit of a fat l he was starting to raise the pistol to engage into battle but that that old guy over there with the huge beard in the back he seems quite happy with the results and i'm guessing the person firing these shots is a pretty stoked as well a team geared with gliders soar off the coast of a mysterious jungle island and we can see kind of what appears to be da vinci's flying machines and it appears that gliders are going to be buildable and those are probably going to be a really nice method of transportation especially because we've seen a lot of these different islands they are very vertical and they end up going very high so they're going to be really nice to navigate with and let's be honest dude gliding that just sounds absolutely dope a pirate rating party engages in heated combat aboard a royal galleon seeking to commandeer the enemy ship as an onlooker prepares to grapple over now commandeer that is the key word in this because from what they are saying it appears that you will be able to actually steal ships not just sink them i'm guessing if you take out the ability for the enemy to respawn onto a ship there might be some way for you to lay claim to a ship that you attack and if that's the case that might be a great way of adding ships to your fleet by trying to take down ships who might be weak or storming them with a group of people which is actually where the political side of this game might be really cool and come into play because you might be able to team up with a couple of other smaller ships and you know maybe you could be like a private raiding company and you could lend out your services and for a fee you know this is just kind of like i'm just brainstorming here but this would be kind of cool to see someone do for a fee if someone pays you something you would agree to steal someone's ship for them and maybe they would want that ship in which case you might be able to charge more or maybe they just hate the person that you're trying to raid and you'll be like all right as payment here's a little bit of gold and you can keep the ship as well i just want you to attack this person and steal the prize possession off them maybe they have information that there's some valuables on board like there's so many cool ways that this could play out especially with how big of a game it's going to be and obviously we can see that this man has some sort of a grapple grapple is going to be in the game probably a great way of being able to board a ship and we can see on board the ship a battle for control as members of both sides duke it out and try to survive the shenanigans shenanigans that are going down and in case you guys didn't get the info there will actually be a huge three minute gameplay trailer going into detail of many of the features of atlas before release this week uh it releases on wednesday this video is going up monday night so pretty much expect that video to go up tomorrow so maybe if you guys want me to break that down or something i'll be more than game to but if not go ahead and cop a peek at that and that appears like it's going to be breaking down a whole ton of info and disseminating that type of stuff as well because the vga's trailer was required to be only 60 seconds the initial trailer that they released so they did not get to show the game's scope and mechanics within those 60 seconds so the team is very much so looking forward to showing off the rest navigating the jungle river rapids on a rickety raft and adventurous explorers spots some of the region's wildlife including giraffes elephants rhinos and tigers among others and for our music loving pathfinders i actually posted a link to what appears to be the score for the game the soundtrack that will be playing throughout it so i'll try to have that in the description if you guys want to head on over there but what we are seeing within this image is exactly what they said it appears that there will be rivers and whatnot that might be going through these areas through these islands and even some rapids that might be kind of interesting to traverse but you'll be able to build rafts and travel through islands into this fashion as well and see a variety of very cool wildlife that potentially could all be tameable we could see an elephant over on the left is that an elephant or a mammoth kind of hard, kind of hard to tell it, it looks like they have some kind of tusks going on it might be some sort of weird creature we can see a giraffe on the right we could see some sort of striped feline on the left a tiger a leopard something like i mean the game said it was a tiger so probably that and then i think on the right there might be a rhino because the caption did mention a rhino as well and the final screenshot and information we have so far a lieutenant frantically attempts to put out a deck fire after a liquid flame attack or was it from fire arrows or perhaps the drake overhead buckets can be used to douse the fire bail out a sinking ship transfer between containers its use is varying by salt water or fresh water so there's going to be a lot of utility i'm guessing you might want to keep your ship stocked with fresh water and barrels to be able to hydrate at sea because the survival mechanics of the game are going to continue so food and water out at sea are going to be important and it looks like they're making a very distinct distinction 
between salt water and fresh water so you're not just going to be able to drink water from the ocean and think you're good because that's how people die but they obviously mentioned the ability for the dragon to actually breathe fire and set ships aflame something that you might need to combat can't wait to hopefully get one of those dragons with an off fleet or a empire but they're saying that there's some sort of a liquid flame attack so that's going to be interesting maybe like you'll be able to like throw gasoline or something combustible not gasoline you know what i mean though like old school gasoline whatever its technical term might be called toss that onto ships and set it aflame they mentioned fire arrow fire arrows so actually strategically being able to choose when to use normal arrows versus fire arrows and potentially wreck a whole bunch of havoc and this along with that commandeering thing we were talking about earlier actually plays into something really interesting because you might want to try to not use as destructive tactics even though the destructive tactics might give you a bigger advantage for defeating your enemy maybe you want to steal the ship in which case you might not want to utilize those destructive things which could actually make any potential battles harder and that's another thing that's going to be so cool to see is that depending on what you want out of any potential encounter between ships it will actually affect your strategy going into it which i don't know man it's gonna be dope we know you're gonna be able to actually scuba dive so potentially if you know that there's some very good loot upon a ship you might just want to try to sink it and then send some scuba di divers down to actually be able to uh recover the valuables that it may have had on board but all in all that is the information that we got for atlas as of now i cannot wait for wednesday to come i am going to be hopping into atlas and hopefully having the beginnings of the most powerful pirate empire to rule the world of Atlas. And if the video is out a little bit later, a little bit early, I'm going to be doing my best to get it out on Wednesday. But Wednesday, I'm actually heading out to Chicago to celebrate my birthday. My birthday was earlier this week, but celebrating my birthday with a bay. We're going to be having an awesome time in the city, and I'm really looking forward to that. So if I cannot get a video out right away, apologies for that, but definitely expect videos on Atlas. I'm looking forward to it, and I sincerely hope that you guys are as well. So make sure you're sticking around with that notification bell hit for Atlas and more survival games as well. On top of hitting that like button to let me know that you like this video might want more info about the game coming out as that comes in just a general way of saying you a fan of atlas and let me know in that comment section down below like i'm saying what is your favorite piece favorite tidbit of info out of everything that we got so far but with that said with that done that's gonna wrap it up for me and this humongous info dump for now thank you guys a whole ton for watching hug so it's an awesome one i'll talk to you next one see you